Hi everybody, this is Josh, and in this video I'm going to show you components and styles in Figma. These are two really powerful and really useful features for designing things for user interfaces or web applications or mobile applications. So let's jump right in and see what we can create. So I just wanted to show you kind of the end result of what we're going to try to create, but we're going to do it from scratch. So this idea of sort of like a mobile card, some kind of user interface, that's what we're going to be making. So I'm going to create a new page so we can start from scratch. So I'll just click the plus button right over here in the layers panel next to pages and create a new page. If you have a blank document, you're set up and you're ready to go. Now in the previous videos, I've had you create frames first before we start designing. In this case, we're just going to design on a blank screen because we're going to essentially create our own, almost like our own customized Lego set that we can pull in to a frame later on. So let's just get right into creating the separate pieces and parts. To kind of help myself out, I'm going to start with a rectangle and just drag any size rectangle. I want to create a width of 500 pixels, so I can type that in right up here, and a height of 300. So this will be my rich media. I'll put photos or video here later on, but this will help me set up my components a little bit easier. I want to have a header above here, so let's start with some text. I'll hit T on the keyboard and just start typing, and this will be our heading text. And we'll select all, and then I'm going to format this. I'm going to choose a larger text size. We'll keep it on Roboto. I'll just choose 36 points, and let's make it medium. That's pretty good. And if I want to reuse this style, which I do, we can create a new style. So there's this four dot icon right over here next to the text tab. And if we pop that down, we can add a new text style. So I'll create a new text style and I'll just call this H1. This is sort of a web standard for creating headlines, tagging different attributes that you can use for styling text. So that's our H1. Let's alt drag a duplicate. And this will be our secondary text. And let's format this. And to do that, we want to unlink this text style. So we're going to detach the text style right here. And I'm going to make this one smaller, 24, and make it regular. And let's create a new style of that as well. And this will be our H2. Create style. There we go. And I'm going to select both of these. I'm also going to make sure that I set these on auto height. Now to the left side of this text, I want to have some kind of profile picture or photo or icon. And for now, I'm just going to use a circle. So I'll use the ellipse tool by pressing O on the keyboard. Holding shift, I'm going to click and drag out a circle. And I want to make this exactly 80 pixels. So I can type it in right up here. And as long as my constraint proportions is locked, it will keep that a perfect circle. Let's choose a color, and I'll just choose this purple color for now. And I'm going to make this 20 pixels away from the left edge of this text. I can line it right up and snap it to those smart guides, and then nudge it over holding shift by 10 pixels, so I can just hold shift and press the left arrow key twice. And now that will be 20 pixels away from my text. Now for my headline text, I want to make sure that I keep the spacing and the positioning of this text. So what I can do is create a new auto layout with Shift A. Then I'm going to lasso select all three of these elements and put those as well into an auto layout with Shift A. I'm going to increase my padding here to 30 and then resize my frame to match my rectangle here that I created earlier. Let's go ahead and add a fill to this circle and change it to image. I have one ready. You can use whatever photo you'd like. I'm going to use one of my vector self-portraits here. And now we'll select this frame too and we can rename it over here in the layers panel. This is going to be our header. So this will be our header for our card component or sort of mobile user interface design. And we're going to click this button right up here. We have these four diamonds where you can use Control, Alt, and K 
to create a new component. So let's click that, and now we have a new component. Our outline turns purple, our text turns purple. Now I know I'm gonna to want to have some kind of text or some section underneath our image. So pressing T on the keyboard again, this time I'm gonna click and drag out a text box. And for this, I'm just gonna grab some text from the web. This is actually a really great resource. If you wanna look at Google's design guidelines, material.io, there's a lot of really good information on how they've created all of their design rules with some great animations. You can see the cards. It's very similar to what we're creating right now. So I wanna create a new text block here and paste in this text so I can see what I'm doing. We'll format this just a little bit here. This can be any text that you want. I'll select it all. I'm gonna detach it from my styles. We're gonna create a new style. This is gonna be our body style. And I want my width to be 440. And I wanna make sure that I have auto height on over here in the text panel. And I can just center that up with my square. I also want to have this secondary text as sort of a section header. So I'm going to drag a copy out onto my screen right above my paragraph. Let's give some distance between these. I'll go 20 pixels. So this is using our H2 and we're gonna create a new text style for a paragraph. Clicking our four dot icon right up here, we're gonna create a new text style. This will be our body copy. So, or we can just label it H3 and we'll create a new style. Now this will make it a lot easier when we change our text style by going over here, clicking on our, our text style icon right up here, and I can change this to an H1, I can change it to an H3, and back to an H2. Let's go ahead and put these into an auto layout. So I'll select them both, press Shift A. This is going to automatically create a vertical layout. And I think I wanna have a little decorative line underneath the section title. So let's just press L on the keyboard and drag out a line. You can hold shift to make sure you get a perfectly straight line. And I wanna make it 100 pixels wide. And let's give it a stroke size of two and change its color to this blue color that I have here. You can, you can choose whatever color you want. And I'm gonna drag this into my auto frame and put it right there. So now we have this little decorative line underneath our section title and then a paragraph. Over here in the layers panel, where it says frame two, I'm going to rename this body. And we'll create a new component out of that. Now, another thing that you're gonna use a lot in any kind of user interface or website design is a button. We did that in our last video. So just to refresh your memory, we're going to press T on the keyboard. We'll create a new text element in this case, we're gonna keep it on our H3, and I'm just gonna call this action. And I'll just put a zero one after it. I'll create a new auto layout with shift A. I'll leave the 10 pixel padding, that's fine for now. We'll add a fill color, and I'm gonna make this button our dark blue, and change my text to white. And then I actually think I wanna make this bold. So if we press control B on the keyboard, it will override our text styles and give us a bold font. And let's create a new, another text style and call this one button text. And if you deselect or just select your background here, you can see all the text styles come up here and you can get some information and you can also do all your adjusting right here. So if you wanted to change all of your H1s to a different font or a different weight, let's say all of the H1s we're gonna make thin, you can see I can make those changes really quickly. So there's a button, I'm going to select our frame and let's give it a corner radius here of, let's say six. So we have a nice little friendly button right there. And let's make that a component. There we go. Now what I can do is drag an instance. So just like we do when we alt drag to duplicate an item, when you duplicate a component, 
it will create a new instance of that component. So I'm going to duplicate this component and drag it inside of my body section here. And our body section is automatically expanded to accommodate our button there. So now our body text also has an instance of our master button. Let's go ahead and rename this from frame two to master button. And any changes that I make on the master button, if I change the color, all of the instances will also change. Let's go ahead and give our, our media placeholder here a color as well. And I'm just going to change the background of my profile image there. There's one more component that I want to create, which is a divider. And to do this, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and drag out a very skinny rectangle. And then I'm actually going to make it two pixels tall right over here. So the height is two pixels. And my width, I'm going to make 500. And I'll change my color here to this dark blue. And then just hitting five on the keyboard, I want to make it 50% transparent or 50% opacity. So I can just hit five and it will automatically go to 50%. You can see that right up here. So that layer is now 50% opaque. And I'm going to put this into an auto layout as well. Now over in the layers panel, I'm going to make sure I have that rectangle selected. And then I'm going to change the resizing from fixed width to fill container. And the height I'm going to leave on fixed width. And now when I select my frame here, let's go ahead and rename this. So I'll just double click to rename it and I'll call this divider and I don't want to have any padding on this so I'm going to take off the padding just put it to zero and we'll make this a component now as well so now we've got our basic building blocks that we're going to assemble in the next video and I want to show you how modular this can be and how much time this can save you by creating fluid and dynamic elements that we can then update later on and create all kinds of designs with these smart pieces. The real beauty and the real power of components is when you have multiple things, multiple instances, all referencing the same component and then make changes to that component. It's really cool. So stay tuned for the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.